Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. In this video, I'm just going to be going everything that you really need to know about the text pre-processing pipeline within the NLP framework. And you can apply these skills for more technical and more complex NLP type situations. Uh, so these are the general steps I'll be going through. Uh, punctuations, URLs, stop words, lower casing, tokenization, stemming, and alimentization. And throughout this entire notebook that I'll just be iterating through, I will primarily not really focus on the Spacey and LTK libraries only when needed, such as when I'm using stemming or alimentization. And so the data I'll be using is from a Wikipedia page. It's just like the page of Elon Musk, for instance, and we will see that over here. So let's go through and start iterating. This is the general text that we will be using. This is just a data frame. So I essentially just copied paragraphs into each separate cell uh, within the Excel file. And this is what it looks like. So this is the data we'll be going through. Uh, so first one is a link. You can go ahead and check that out. Uh, so these are the paragraphs we'll be working with. And this is going to be removing punctuation. So for instance, when you're using the regex function, if you just want to remove all of your punctuation, this is just the regex string. And I already did a regex video on that. So you can just go ahead and check that out. The link is in the notebook and also in the description below. Uh, this just goes ahead and remove all of our punctuation. So this is our original text and this is our cleaned text you can automatically see which has been removed you got those funny characters you got the dollar signs that were removed uh, the brackets and so on and so forth but nonetheless this is another another really quick tidbit if you're trying to you know clean your urls uh, basically another regex function you can use is just like it just looks at the pattern for http and then www and then just looks for all those particular strings that follow after that and this is just an example uh, we only have one url and so this is our clean text as we can see we don't see our https over here so moving on so stop words uh stop words are essentially just words that don't add any particular value to the actual sentence and just removing those stop words reduces the complexity of your given nlp models and these are the words um, the most common words i would say and i just essentially just got this list from this link right here in general these are all the words that are don't really necessarily add any value. And of course you can edit this list. You can take out some words that you think add value and you can even add additional words that you don't think add any value. But we have, how many words do we have? We have close to, I think we have like close to, yeah, we have 173 stop words and some other libraries that have like a few hundred more uh, these stop words, but you know, you can pick and choose whichever you would want. Now to remove these stop words, um, yeah, I just wrote like a quick lambda function just iterating through. It's actually just looks throughout this list and looks throughout your strings and just removes those stop words. All right. So next one, lower casing in general, it's a good idea perhaps to just lower case your entire, like all of your text. Uh, as we can see, it's just like a really quick function, the to lower function over here and it just lowercases everything and if it's like a special character it just leaves it alone as we can see what's going on over here it just leaves those alone now the idea behind the lowercase aspect is that many different types of language models they'll consider a capital e for instance different from the letter or lowercase e and it could look at the words the word embeddings a little bit differently and hence a different meaning just so that you are on like the same playing field you would ideally want to lowercase your text unless you have like a huge huge model like a gpt3 where it considers both of those particular situations but in general when you're working with smaller models you should perhaps lowercase your text and this is how you would do it yeah okay so next we have tokenization and so this is an example on what tokenization would look like uh, this is the output value where we have each individual word that's separated by a space is by itself so elon reeve musk those are three different words and they're uh, three different tokens now tokenization or the idea of tokenization doesn't necessarily have to be by word it can be by like every two characters every three characters every two words so on and so forth and you'll notice that the more nlp models that you start to play with their back end is a little bit different on how they actually actually pre-process the text and of course we have different types of granularity that you would want to act on but uh, just be aware of those differences they they are not just the um not just the words themselves so for instance when we have this one sentence this is just separating it by words make sure to hit that like button and subscribe 
uh, and just went ahead and did it by words over here. I also went ahead, and this is just an example for our first sentence, but uh, this is also an example if we want to tokenize by sentence. So um, it's essentially just looking for those periods and then just separating or just you know, splitting those strings based on periods. Yeah, I just went ahead and um, wrote that quick function right there. And when we, what we have here is just the printed output of each individual sentence looking for that period. So for each one of those commas, those represent a period because they are separated or split by that period. So as we can see here, we have a period here and five and six is its own, this own string. And then this is going to go all the way up to here. I think that's the next, nope, we have another sentence right here right before the width so open ai there's a period there so we'll keep on doing that and within the actual array that we have going on we just conveniently split out our entire string chunk into individual sentences so that's how you do it by sentences uh, you can also do it by paragraphs and this was a little bit tricky um, so it's also somewhat subjective like you would want to determine what is categorized as a paragraph and so i just went ahead and wrote this function where it accepts one two inputs basically like uh, detailing how long a paragraph should be and then the list of sentences that you're going to be inputting into so by default i just said that three sentences will default to uh, a paragraph and it uses the sentence sentence iser um, function that I just created up here and it just essentially just chunks it goes ahead and chunks and it handles those edge cases that we might have so just run that and this is what the paragraph chunk idea would be so the first three sentences would be the you know its own paragraph and then everything that falls on after it just chunks chunks it right after and you know if there are sentences that are less than three in total length it would just you know return that particular string by itself so you can perhaps use this for uh, some other nlp models that you might need or whenever the situation is most convenient when you are trying to tokenize based on a paragraph paragraph formats so that's how you do that uh and then and this is last but not least if you want to uh see what that tokenize tokenization by sentence looks like by each individual one so that is what that looks like. And now we can go in stemming and lemmatization. So the idea of stemming is that it just searches for a key characteristic, um, a key characteristic being a few characters that are at the end of a specific word and it just chops them off. It does not consider anything related to context or any of that. So sometimes, or more often than not, you're gonna have a lot of gibberish and incorrect spelling. Lemmatization, uh, considers the context of that word in its base form. Uh, it makes more sense when we are going to be lemmatizing a specific verb in that specific context, and we won't necessarily have gibberish because all the words are mapped to a dictionary. So um, lemmatization sounds a lot better than stemming, obviously, uh, but there are a few caveats why you would use uh, stemming over lemmatization, uh, computational power being one. So if your entire system, if your entire base is built on speed, then perhaps lemmatization is not the best. And another caveat to using uh, stemming over lemmatization is that stemming, you could incorporate some additional rules to improve its accuracy. So if you want to go through the speed route, then maybe researching stemming is probably the best bet. Oops, let's try and run that. So, okay, so I'll be utilizing NLTK and Spacey. So the NLTK, I'll just be going through an example on what the actual stemming process looks like. And I just went ahead and ran this and this pops up on my screen. And you just go ahead and click on the model section. And I just went ahead and downloaded uh, this identifier, the punct uh, tokenizer models. Uh, it just has all of your associated, uh, I guess like really small base models that you can go ahead and use. You can also look at the, where's the other model? Uh, Moses sample model. So you can also perhaps use that. Uh, but yeah, you can choose any one of those models, anything that has the word model, a model in it, you can go ahead and uh, check that one out. So I went ahead and downloaded Punct. And after you downloaded whichever model that you chose, uh, you can go ahead and check out this particular link on uh, stemming and lemmatization, but essentially I got this function from that particular link and all it's doing is that it's just splitting uh, this particular sentence into its individual token and then running the stemmer on top of each one of the words within the list. 
So that's what that is doing. Uh, we can go ahead and run this and this is the original sentence or the paragraph I should say. And this is the follow on. So as you can see, stemming could return gibberish like reeve. There's no E in there, even though this is like a pronoun. Uh, we have, let's see what else, what else is is um let's see business business yep so it just chops off some of those characters that are not entirely relevant and the main reason why this is happening but uh, behind the stemming approach is that stemming has like a list of words uh, that it looks at and it just automatically stems a particular word to that base root um, without any of that context held. So that is why that is doing it. And that's why it's a little bit faster than the lemmatization route, where it's basically like lots of dictionaries. Uh, and so this is where the spacey comes in, where it's actually really, really well known that lemmatization with spacey is very vastly superior compared to NLTK. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and download a basic uh, spacey model in English with the, the EN and it has been downloaded over here and it's a small model sm is this small so we can go ahead and import that and uh, what this is doing is that this is already a very small language model in english and it already has a vocabulary on which all of these you know words are matched with something so what i'm over doing over here is that i'm just printing the original word the uh the vector value in the vector space and then the actual lemmatization of the original value so if we just you know scroll down here there's one value i want to point out if we have the word is the root is b so that's what's happening here and that's where the lemmatization is very very powerful and you can get some really nifty and accurate results uh, and as we can see, let's see, Reeve right here, Reeve, since it's a pronoun, it's just associated, well, it just returns it by itself. So I went ahead and I printed out the original and also the uh, the joined list of all the lemmatization aspects. And this is what we got going on over here. And as you can see, you can see a tremendous difference. The only downside is that this takes a little bit longer when you're running, especially if you have a vast amount of text. If you want to check out the named entity recognition, if it's not already posted, then stay tuned.